Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? My name's Tie-Dye. I hope you guys had a pretty awesome day today. My day's been pretty awesome so far. I got some good tunes going. I got some nice David's Tea here. And today, we're diving into our very first modeling lesson in Maya. So as you guys know, about a week ago, I, I posted a tutorial on the basic UI of Maya, the interface. And if you guys are very new to the program, I highly recommend checking that out. I'll have a link in the description below. But today, we're going to be doing our very first modeling project, which is how to model this sword right here. It is super basic, very, very bare bones there's a million ways to do it this is just my personal workflow so if you're new to Maya and you're new to modeling this is definitely something that's gonna help you out quite a bit and I'll also have a link to this image in the description below if you want to use this exact one if you want to use a different sword feel free to follow along whichever way you'd like but anyways what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Maya this is just how mine looks when I open it up like I said in my last tutorial if yours looks different that's just your preferences this is just how mine opens up and just the way that I've adjusted it to do um, pretty much exactly what I wanted to for my for my workflow this is how I like it so if yours looks different that's totally cool but anyways to get that image in there what we're gonna do is hit spacebar we're gonna go into our side view here and I'm just gonna go to view image plane import image and I have mine located on the desktop named sword reference and as you can see when I double click that and import it here it is gonna be in all the different viewports but we're gonna be mainly using the side view here in perspective you can also see it pretty well uh, what I'm actually going to do is bring the scale up a little bit just by selecting it and pressing R and clicking this middle cube just to make it a little bit bigger for our reference. And then I'm also going to push it back a little bit in the Z axis just so that we're not overlapping it when we start making our sword. So now with that done, I'm actually going to go into the side view here just by pressing spacebar over the window. And I'm going to get rid of this grid just because it's a little bit distracting while we are working. So I'm going to press this little grid icon up here right underneath the lighting tab in between lighting and show. And if you click that, the grid will go away. So the way that I'm going to do this is by using a little tool called the Create Polygon Tool, which is under Mesh Tools. And what this allows you to do is pretty much draw in a 2D polygon, and then from there you can extrude it and do whatever you want. You can probably do this uh, this entire thing using a cube and just modifying the vertices and stuff like that. This is just my personal workflow. This is how I'm going to be doing it for uh, this project here. And I mean, like I said before, there's a million different ways to do this. So if you're more comfortable doing it a different way, go for it. But for weapons, I find that this way is super easy and it's very, very easy to understand. So now with this tool selected, I can literally just draw the points that I want on the sword, and this is going to be very low poly, so I'm not going to use a whole lot, so it'll be very, very, um, I'd like to say sparse with where you put these, because you really don't want to overdo it, it's a very basic shape, and as you can see, when I start clicking around, it's going to start forming a polygon, and if you don't like this, because it's going to sort of overlap everything, you can click your wireframe mode up here under panels, and it'll get rid of that sort of filled color, just if it's easier to draw it in this way, and then what I'm going to do from here is click right back to the middle, because we're only going to be doing half of it and mirror it over, and then from there I can hit enter, and we now have our polygon. And as you can see, it is fully black, and that means that our normals are reversed. So what I'm going to do is, with our object selected, I am going to go to Mesh Display and Reverse. And now we have it colored in. It is not going to be all black and uh, reversed and whatnot. So now our normals are all set up. Everything's good. The back is going to be black for now, but we'll get to a point where we can fix that. I'm going to go back into our side view here, though. And since, you know, we haven't really muted anything, this is a great time to sort of tweak it or... Uh, our polygon here, make sure it's exactly what we want, so I'm going to go back into wireframe mode and just sort of tweak some of these vertices, just uh, by hitting W, and then with my vertice mode selected, I can go and edit these and move them up and down to where I like them to be. So I'm just going to make sure it follows the shape as best as I can without it being sort of, you know, a bit of an awkward shape. And I'm also going to make sure that this is perfectly lined up by selecting this and holding V. And as you can see, when I hold V, the square here turns into a circle. And that means I can snap to vertices. So if I hold V and I sort of drag it sideways, it's going to snap to the vertices along the, the horizontal axis. So I'm going to make sure I snap it to the one on the left. So just holding V, then clicking, and then dragging to where I want it to be and making sure it snaps there. So now we know that is perfectly aligned and we are good and we are ready to flip this polygon. So I'm going to take off the wireframe mode, just so I can see the whole thing. With object mode selected, I'm going to press Control D. And now that we're in our, um, our channel box, what I can do is go to scale, and in the Y axis, instead of a positive one, I can make this a negative one to flip it over. And as you can see, it's not perfectly flipped, so I'm just going to move this into place here. And uh, essentially what I want to do is just line up these two vertices as best as I can before we merge them. So that's pretty, pretty darn close right there. I'm going to select both of these polygons 
hit uh, mesh and combine. So now they are successfully one polygon. As you can see, there's a big gap here on this end. If I go to my vertice mode, that's because the two vertices here are very far apart. So what I can do for that is simply merge the vertices that are close together. So I'm going to select these two first, go to edit mesh, merge, and hit the little box here, and just make a really small number. Mine in this case is 0 0.0040. And when I hit merge, it's going to merge those two together. And let's see if the tolerance is good enough on this end. I'm actually just going to press G, which really activates your last command, which in this case is the merge. And what do you know, it is a strong enough threshold and we got that perfectly. So this is also a great time to edit some of your uh, vertices if you don't like them, just by selecting them, hitting R and then scaling them up and down just to, you know, make a very good sword shape. I'm just going to thin this out a little bit just because I want to make this as, as visually uh, appealing as possible. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that shape right there. Now the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to close off these vertices. Because as you can see, this is a multi-sided polygon. We have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we have plenty of sides. And we can only really use in games and films. We can only use quads and tries. So objects or polygons, sorry, that have four and three sides. Mainly four, though. So what I'm going to do is go to our modeling toolkit. Which if you don't have this tab here, it's just this little icon up here. You click that to get to the modeling toolkit. And here we can find under tools, the multi-cut tool. From here, I can just click and click between vertices, hit enter, and now we have a straight line. And this is just closing off these polygons, which is going to allow us to have some nice quads and some stuff that we can really work with. So I'm just going to do that all the way down. And essentially, we have a very good starting point and a very good polygon that we can work with here. If I go back into my wireframe mode, though, as you can see, there's this little divot here that we do actually have in our polygon. Now, the way that I'm going to get that is if you click along any of these edges with the multi-cut tool, you can click and hold and drag a, a vertice wherever you want, and it shows you a percentage as to how far up it is in between those edges. But if you hold shift, it'll snap between percents of 10. So in this case, I'm going to snap it at 30% and leave my vertice there and close it off right along here where that sort of divot ends in the image. I'm going to do the same thing here. And since we know it's 30%, I can click and hold and then shift up to... 30%, kind of hard to see there, and then I'm just going to close it off right over there. <clears throat> Excuse me about that. And now I'm going to turn off my vertice mode, and as you can see, we pretty much have the basis of the entire shape done. So from here, I'm going to go change my uh, viewpoints, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of my, let's see, vertices along the middle, because this is a pretty flat sword right now. So I'm going to grab that vertice, the one in the middle, midpoint there. There, 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 and there, and I'm going to leave the tip one just because I want that to be a very sharp point. And I'm going to pull this out a little bit so we can get some of that shape to the sword. I'm also going to grab this vertice here and this vertice here as parts of the divot as well as these two. And I'm just shift clicking to select all of them at the same time and pull those out as well. So we get a bit more of a rounded shape near the end here. Not too round though. Maybe I should just ease that off a little bit, just so it's not perfectly connected. In fact, what I might do is I might pull this out and then bring the divot itself in. It's just a lot of experimentation here. I'm just going to see how that looks before I settle on anything. So I might like that a bit more. I'm going to turn off the grid just for easier viewing. Um, push that in a little bit. And I think I might go with that. So I have the divot in a little bit, as you can see. And then the edges are sort of pushed out and rounded a little bit, which is pretty nice. And one more thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, I left this open. So I'm going to go back to my multi-cut tool and close off this vertice by clicking, shift clicking. And let's say 60% seems to be good. And then clicking here, clicking and holding, shift clicking, and 60% there. So now we have that fully closed off and ready to work with. So as you can see, we sort of have this very, very soft divot. And I'm actually going to harden these edges just to sort of make it look more like an actual metal piece. So I'm going to click this edge, shift click, shift click, and get in here and do the same thing. Shift select all of these, even this little, actually, I'm going to leave that edge there. And from there, what we can do is go to mesh display, harden edges. And as you can see, that makes it a very hard edge. It sort of looks like an actual metal indentation, like the image there. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can also do that along the entire end of this just to make it look more like solid metal. Mesh display, harden edge. Might have already been hardened to be perfectly honest, not too sure. And now I'm gonna actually mirror this entire thing over 
and make it an actual sort of double-ended sword. So I'm going to select the entire thing, Control D like we did before, go back to our channel box, and I believe the axis that we want to flip it on is the Z axis. So now that we have a duplicated version on top of it, I can scale this one in the Z axis, negative one. Enter, and now we have it perfectly flipped over. So now all we have to do is match up the vertices again by merging them. So first, before we do that, we have to select both of these, make sure they are the same mesh by having them both selected, going to mesh and uh, combine. There we go. And now let's select some vertices and start to merge them up. So selecting both of these vertices, once again, edit mesh, merge, and make sure your threshold's on something low. If they aren't actually merging, just try and uh, lower your threshold number. But for now, this seems to be working great. And then I'm just going to select these and press G and work my way around. Because G, like I said earlier, is going to be a repeat of your last command, which is super, super helpful in Maya, especially if you guys are learning and you're doing some very tedious work that maybe you don't understand a, a more proper way of doing it. Something like this is really going to work up your or speed up your workflow. So just work my way around. And yes, I could probably select all these at the same time, but sometimes Maya doesn't like that. So just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to be doing that and merging these last ones there. So now we essentially have the entire blade and uh, it's looking pretty good. Obviously here isn't looking the greatest. I might extend these out a little bit just because it seems to be divding in just by selecting both and then going to my scale tool. And something like that is looking a lot more proper. So now that we have that part done, and like I said, you can always tweak the end there, but I'm pretty happy with that for now. We're going to move on to the handle. And the handle is going to be a lot easier. We're going to be using some symmetry tools, though. So I'm going to be diving into our Create tab, Polygon Primitives, and Cube. And I'm just going to get this into place right along the center point, or at least where I believe the center point would be. I'm just going to sort of line up the arrow with the middle point of this divot. And we can always adjust it later. This is just eyeballing for the sake of this tutorial. And let's see. Hmm. I'm going to scale this down in this axis, the X axis, move it into place a bit and just sort of make it more of a, a sword handle shape. So sort of extend it out, make sure it's the right size. As long as it's covering the end, we should be good. Covering that up a little bit. It seems to be in the right position. Maybe thin it out a little bit. And there we go. So from here, what we can do is we can turn on our symmetry tool, which is also uh, right in our modeling toolkit, a super awesome, just all the tools you really need to be perfectly honest when it comes to modeling. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is diving into the symmetry options here. So I'm going to turn symmetry from off to world Y, I believe it should be. So if I select a face up here, it's also going to, hmm, let's see. So symmetry, let's see, maybe not world Y, object Y. Yeah, there we go, object Y, sorry. So now if I select a face up here, it's also gonna select it down there. Same if I were to do it up here. Um, well, I guess this isn't really the best option because there isn't really anything on the top as well as the bottom, except for maybe these edges. And even that is not working. So we're gonna be doing it just for this object. This is a great example of it right here. So if I select a face on the top, since our symmetry is on object Y, it's going to be selecting on the bottom as well. And this is where we can do some extrudes and some cool stuff like that. So I'm going back into my side view, just pressing space bar. And I'm first of all, just going to move these vertices in just to sort of better match the shape of this. And let's see, I'm just going to get back out so I can select this face. And then we can do some extrusions here. So control E on your keyboard is actually an extrude. You can do it over here as well under components, but control E is just a really fast uh, keyboard command. So control E, and then I'm just going to move this up. And as you can see on the bottom, it's also going to move it up and just sort of get that into position. Control E, move that up, do a slight rotation, maybe even scale that in a little bit. And as you can see, it's just a little bit of tedious work, but we're just going to make our way there. And this obviously isn't going to be perfectly accurate as this is just an example more than anything else. But as you can see, this is sort of the, the main method of using symmetry and a great way to start learning something like that. And maybe one last extrusion. And let's see if we like that. Maybe just one more. Just get that perfect rotation. And 
that should be good. And it's the same on both sides, as you can see. So now we have that handle done. We could obviously do some cool things with it. For example, if I change my symmetry from um, Y to object, I want to say Z. Yep, so it selects that side now. What we can do is select all of our faces along the front, which will automatically select the ones along the back as well. As you can see, both sides, since we're on object Z in the symmetry mode, and we can hit it with a bevel, which is located here under components. And as you can see, it's going to start to round our shape a little bit, which is pretty cool. And we have all these options here. So we have our fractions, our segments, and our autofill. So we can just sort of change this to sort of affect the amount of bevel. We can change the segments to see how many actual segments of beveling we want, which in this case, we don't really need more than one. But I think I'm just going to keep the fraction to maybe something like... 0.6 just for nice slightly rounded maybe even a little bit more than that let's go to 0.8 so we have a light roundedness to it um, as you can see it's sharp what you can do is select the object and go to mesh display soften edge to sort of soften the whole thing out and then harden the edges that you'd like to maybe let's see maybe just this entire side I'm just double clicking on the edge and it will select the entire rotation so I'm just selecting this entire ring here which will also select the other end since we're still in symmetry. Mesh display, harden edge. So now we have a nice hard face, but rounded innards, which is which is giving off a nice effect. And then to get the blade um, handle part itself, rather than the guard, what we can do is grab this face here. I'm just gonna turn the symmetry off for now. Grab that face there. And we can do another extrusion. This one's gonna be a bit of a different. It's gonna be on top of another plane. So I'm gonna hit Control E and immediately press R without doing anything else. And I'm just gonna extrude this face within itself just to get more of the, the shape of this handle, the size of this handle, if that makes sense to you guys. And with that done, we can now extrude it and pull it out. Hopefully I got that about right. That seems to be pretty good. I'm just gonna shrink that down. And that seems to be pretty good for the sword so far. Now, as you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, just getting over a cold right now, so please uh, please excuse me for that. Uh, as you can see, this is a bit more rounded, and this is pretty sturdy. If we do want to add extra edge loops to this, we can go to Mesh Tools and Insert Edge Loops, or we can just go to the Multi-Cut, and I'm just going to show you the Multi-Cut way first. I want to show you both. So the Multi-Cut way is if you select Multi-Cut, and you hold Control over an edge, you can see we can start adding in entire rings of edges that go all the way around, right? And that's pretty cool. It's quick for a, for a, like a super fast, messy job. But if you want to do exact edge loops, what we can do is go to Mesh Tools, uh, Insert Edge Loops. I'm going to hit the square here. And let's say we want, um, let's go with three edge loops. If I click, it's going to make three perfectly spaced edge loops right there. And from there, what I can do is go into my side view and maybe turn on the skeleton mode here and go into my edge mode, double click on that edge, select the entire ring. And from here, what I can do is, let's see. Yeah, I can sort of ease the shape down. So I'm going to just sort of round it out a little bit. And that's looking a little bit more natural, a little bit more like the reference image right there. What we can also do for this handle is, let's see. Something that we could do for everything, to be honest, is let's do a trick that we did before. So I'm going to click on here and hold shift to about 50%. So now we have a vertice there. Actually, no, we're not going to do that. Let's get rid of that vertice. I'm going to hold shift over top of this. and It's going to show us exactly where our midpoint is. And with that done, I can hold control and snap to that midpoint and make a ring all the way around this in the middle. And from there, what I can do is select the edge by double clicking the entire thing. I'm going to deselect, hmm, deselect these ones underneath just by control clicking to deselect. And I'm going to do the same over here just so we have it on the top as well as the handle itself. I'm going to go to my scale tool and I'm going to grab the middle part and pull that out just to add some roundness and some dynamicness to the entire thing. Just so it's a bit more rounded on the top. I'm just making sure it's not squishing anything there, which it is. So I'm going to undo that. Let's just do this one thing at a time. 
let me just unselect that just the handle for now I'm just gonna extrude the handle out a little bit and even that let me just get rid of those yep so just the bottom part of the handle I'm gonna bring that out a little bit now I can do these top parts individually and I'm just gonna sort of move them forward a bit just to round it out and just that right there adds a little bit of depth to it same with this I can also pull these out one at a time and if I put on my symmetry back on Z I believe it was if I select one it'll select the other so I'm gonna select one pull it out a little bit select this one pull it out a little bit more and then bring it back in just so we have a bit more of a rounded handle even on the top we can do that so I'm gonna go back to object Y and we did that a little bit I just want to get a bit more of a nice rounded shape just to get that perfect so there's a very basic handle right there it's not perfect by any means as you can see it's very blocky I might want to pull this in a little bit more as well yeah so that's pretty cool and the last thing that we have to do is just add this uh, little jewel to the very back of it and that's simple we're just going to create polygon primitives put in a cylinder I'm going to go to my rotate tool by pressing E and let's see I'm going to go to my attribute editor change the rotation to 90 I believe yep and then from here we can essentially just scale it and move it into place so I'm going to shrink the scaling down we have it on 16 subdivisions which is perfectly fine it's a rel uh, relatively low poly object anyways and I'm just going to scale this down and move it into position obviously our whole thing is a little bit off but that's perfectly fine seeing as this reference itself isn't perfectly symmetrical I'm gonna move this into position just a best guess for now which is looking pretty good there I'm gonna duplicate it by pressing Control D and this one I'm gonna scale it out and then shrink it in the other axes by grabbing this green square which will do two at the same time and pulling it out a little bit more and once again doing that by control D to duplicate scaling that down and then scaling it out a little bit and as you can see that's a very very basic model of a sword but as you can see there's like a million different ways to do everything there's tons of different ways to try this and get into it and there's a bunch of different techniques to use just to do something like this so we whip this up in about 20 minutes which is pretty good and that's a pretty basic sword right there so if you're brand new to modeling you probably will uh, have hopefully picked up a few tips and tricks here and uh, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial a like on the video would be super super helpful comment what's the next kind of stuff you want me to teach you guys here in Maya like I said this is super basic so we can get in some more advanced stuff soon but if you did enjoy this any support on the video would be super super helpful thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys have a great day once again my name has been tie-dye and i will catch you in the next video see ya